sit down and do some laundry together, shall we? I'm like Mr. Rogers. Oh my gosh, I am so sore from the gym. I did leg day yesterday. I used um, Whitney Simmons app called Alive for the first time and that was like, oh my goodness, that just really, I just wanna sit here with some lotion. Oh, just right in there. Oh, I, I'm gonna have to roll this out like this is. Oh. Of course, next at work for three days, I'd be like, hello, there's the lotion, get to it. <laughs> Oh, we have some things to catch up on. I have some laundry to do. I've been sitting here doing laundry. Let's continue. I also look ridiculous. I literally have, like, are you this type of person too, where you pretty much just have like multiple drink options? I swear I'm that person. Like the waiter, waitress will come by and I'm just like, I'm that person. I'm, I've gotta have a Coca-Cola today. I gotta have a water. I gotta have a mimosa. And I just really want a lemonade too, <laughs> espresso or something. Anyways, we've got some updates. Some, I don't know, I just thought I would chat with you guys. I honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna put this up, but I think that it would be good to just get it out for me, you know? Um, so gosh, where do we start? Okay. Well, I've been in a bit of a funk lately, and I have some theories as to why, but overall, I don't really know why. Um, I'd also like to be more consistent with you guys and on this channel, which I will be able to do soon, as there's going to be very consistent childcare coming up next month, at the end of next month. Like, consistent, same location, same timing, same everything, which I'm very grateful for. So that is happening. I feel like my nipples are just in your face. I'm gonna put a sweater on real quick. So last week, so yeah, what, what in the, what in the, what, what? Looks like a dog treat. What is that? Just came out of laundry. Do you ever find anything floating in laundry? You're like, where in the, what did, where did that come from? Last week we had something pretty sad happen. Um, Nick and I's first pet was Jojo, our big cat. And Nick lived here with Jojo before I even lived here. They would meow at each other. Like this cat was so important to us. And um, he was our first pet together too, now that I'm thinking about it. But Nick was like not a cat guy, loved Jojo. like. Jojo changed his whole heart towards cat, like cats. Um, and uh, Jojo, unfortunately, um, I cried a minute ago when I tried to film this, and I'm gonna try not to cry now. I'm not trying to make it a downer video, but Jojo, unfortunately, passed away pretty tragically last week. And it's been really difficult. Um, it's been really hard. It's hard to lose any pet, but we inherited him from one of Nick's friends who also tragically passed away, totally unexpected at a very young age. So we inherited Jojo and that's where Jojo came from. So Jojo is up in heaven with him right now, but it's just really sad because Jojo was like, it's just so different around here without Jojo. Like I just can't, I just, it's just really sad. I was literally just washing his little, this is his little pad that goes up on the very top of his little cat tree that Nick built him. And I started doing this laundry before he passed away. There's some weird stuff stuck to my underwear. I don't know what this is. I've been dealing with that and the motions of that. And it's, gosh, it's really hard to have moments like that when you have little kids that just don't really get it. Cause like when, when it all happened, like Harlow was still awake and she didn't see anything or she wasn't there or whatever, but um, she just keeps asking about Jojo, Jojo, Jojo. And it's like, you just want to be like, hey, babe, like, please stop asking about Jojo. Like, every time you bring it up, it just is really hard for us. You know, she's two. She doesn't understand. So it makes it difficult because you don't really get a second to yourself until they go to bed. And anyways, if you're a parent, you you totally can relate to that and understand that. Um, but what else? So we, the other day, too, I, yesterday I had posted um, that I had a two-hour um, counseling session. And I was like, 
just championing that. I was like, I think it's like really like it's taboo for couples to go to counseling and for people to go to counseling. It seems very taboo still, which is crazy to me. But, and I had a lot of people reach out that were like, oh my gosh, where did all this, like, there's like all these spots on the back of my like new, oh my gosh, the whole thing. <sighs> How does this happen? I'm so careful with my laundry and this is like a brand new shirt. And there's like all these like little marks on it. I don't know if you can see it, but maybe, maybe I can bleach it out. I don't know. I just seriously need to only wash my whites with whites and I usually do. But then there's that one time where I'm like, oh gosh, I don't have enough whites and here we are. So anyways, um, where was I going with this? My brain lately, oh my gosh, I've been so tired. So I had a lot of people that were like, how do you find a counselor that like you get along with, that gets you and blah, blah, blah. And that is challenging. That is a challenging part of finding, um, finding a good fit. And it's just something you have to do. You have to try people out. You know what I realized too, is you can absolutely 100% like interview counselors. And the reason I did that when I was looking for someone for Nick and I is because I very much so am into gender roles and not like hardcore, like it was in the forties, like Nike, where I can't have a bank account. That's not what I mean. I just think nowadays there's a lot of like stripping men of their masculinity and like being offended if a guy offers to help you pick up like your bag like nick said he's like even afraid to like offer to pick up people's bags for them like at the airport and stuff because like he doesn't want to offend anybody um and it's just really sad that we're in that day and age and i don't support that so um anyways that's a whole different video but point is like i wanted to make sure that we got a counselor that um understood my philosophy on that and there's actually literally a it's a book called simply feminine the author actually lives in san diego and that book is what i basically used i was like have you heard of the book simply feminine and they they would tell me yes or no and if they said yes and i'm like that is my belief on how like a relationship should be and how i want my relationship to be so like can you help me with that kind of a deal um, Piper's like chewing on some chew treat in the background and it's very loud. So sorry about that. So anyways, um, so I wanted to just say, like, I think it is great to go to counseling. Everyone has their things that they could work on and, and can be better at. I don't care who you are. You can think of the most perfect person that you think is just like a pillar of excellence in your life. They have issues that they need to work on with a counselor. Um, my self-help journey kind of began in when I was like 19 years old. I was dating someone that I truly loved. It was like one of my first loves. And being in this relationship, he would bring things to my attention and that I wasn't aware of. And so I started becoming more self-aware of like my shortcomings and my issues and my triggers and like where they may have stemmed from um, with daddy issues and things like that. And so it kind of put me onto this book that I highly recommend. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And I just wrote notes upon notes upon notes. And I realized that I have a lot of issues and I am aware of them. Some of them I'm probably not so much aware of, but like I need help with them. So counseling is wonderful. And I bet you if you start talking to the couples around you, you'll realize that a lot more of them are in counseling than you knew. Because the moment I started bringing it up and talking about it and asking if somebody had a good counselor, blah, 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 blah everyone was like, yeah, we go to counseling. And it's like, wonderful. I think it's a great thing. Nick and I actually started go to, going to counseling years ago um, just to make sure like our, to have an unbiased opinion of certain situations that were maybe hard for us to work through. And we have those same issues now and they've gotten better and sometimes they've gotten worse. Like I feel like marriage is like an ebb and flow, especially when you have children. Like somebody wrote me back on that story and it was like trouble in paradise. And like, that could be read a million different ways. Like it could be like trouble in paradise, like relationship issues, or it could be like, oh, trouble in paradise. Like, are you okay? Um, so I don't know how they meant it, but um, I just thought it was interesting. Like this person obviously did not know that I was, I am going through a miscarriage. Um, but I will say that like being in a relationship and being married and having two young children, it does put a lot of stress on things. And not only that, but I am married to a firefighter paramedic and 
I need support on how to deal with that. I need support for myself on days where I'm alone, like weeks when I'm alone for four days in a row. Like I, I need help and I'm not afraid to admit that. I need to learn, I need to know how to speak to my significant other who's seen some shit at work. Like I, so anyways, like I just want to say that like, I think it is highly commendable if you were even considering counseling. There are a lot of counseling options where you don't even have to leave your house. Like, um, this is not sponsored, but better help I've heard in a lot of people's videos. Um, you can easily like switch counselors if you're not really jiving with one of them. And that's totally okay because you're going to get with a lot of counselors that you just don't like vibe with at all, or they just don't get you. Like I found my counselor because my friend Allie, um, she, she is a very successful business owner and she is very similar to me. We're, we have pretty like masculine personalities in the sense that we're very like independent and financially stable all on our own. And you know, we're just, we're just ambitious, independent women. And so I, she was like, I love this counselor. Like she calls me out on my bullshit. And I was like, that's exactly what I need. Rather than a counselor that's like, mm hmm yes, mm hmm yes. And how does that make you feel? Like, tell me what the fuck is wrong with me and let's get to it. Like, how do I do this? Like, so she's wonderful, but um, I highly recommend getting into it. Sink your teeth in and don't just keep making excuses. Everyone on the world in the world needs counseling and it is so beneficial and can be so beneficial and just so life-changing that I highly recommend it. And I just feel like it's so taboo. Like people are just so like, Oh, I'm afraid. Like, I don't want people to know that me and my husband go to counseling. Like you and your husband should go to counseling. And that's amazing if he's willing to go. Like, I think it's so wonderful that Nick is willing to go to counseling with me. Like it takes a lot of balls to walk into a counselor's office and be like raw and real and authentic and be like, these are my issues. And like you cry in counseling and it's not a super fun feeling to cry in front of a stranger or maybe your significant other, but being able to show that vulnerability is also in and of itself, like changing, which is great. So I won't go on forever about it, but if you're kind of thinking that maybe you could benefit from it, you would, and you should, and you should, a lot of insurances cover counselors. Um, some of them are sliding scale, a lot of different, oh, this thing's going to hang in. Um, a lot of different things like that. So I, I encourage you to go down that road and, um, it's, there is nothing to be ashamed about. I, if anything, like my friend told me the other day, the one who recommended this counselor to me, she's like, I am so proud of us. She's like 10 years ago, you and I were just so different. And like, now we're like, Hey, well, 10 years ago, I actually still did do self-help and counseling and all that. But she's like, we just now are like talking about our therapy sessions and like always looking for that next better version of ourselves, not just for us, but like our partners and our kids and like whatever. So anyways, just wanted to encourage you to go seek help and take care of yourself. It's very healthy. It's a good thing. Just cause you go to counseling isn't an admittance of like having relationship issues or, um, being on the brink of divorce. It's no, like it is so healthy to do that. And having young children is hard. And it's hard when you're maybe a military wife when your husband is deployed or your husband is a first responder and they're gone for days or they see things at work that you don't necessarily know how to deal with. You know, one tool that our counselor gave us the other day that I thought was amazing is when Nick comes home, I never know what to expect. I don't know if he's going to like, I don't know what he saw the day before. I don't know how hard it was. I don't know how little sleep he got. I don't know what happened. So I, I, sometimes I put my foot in my mouth and I, I don't know any better. And sometimes he won't tell me because he thinks that he's going to just be in a good mood and like, it's going to be good and he can turn it around, but then he's got a really short temper and I'm like, Whoa, didn't expect that. So I can alter my personality a bit to, and not maybe say things that just not like throw a bunch of stuff at him when he walks in the door, basically be had a hard night. So she said, how about on, when you're on your way home, you can send a red heart, a yellow heart or a green heart. And like a red heart means I had a really rough night, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously I can be like nurture, more nurturing than usual. And just be like, do you want to talk about it or whatever? Um, so if you're a first responders wife or 
something that may fall into a similar category, then maybe that would be something that you guys can use too. But anyways, um, enough of that. Um, oh gosh. And I just wanted to touch on this real quick. Now that it's like a huge thing or whatever, but have you guys heard of misophonia? So this is being like triggered sometimes or enraged even or getting anxiety when you hear certain noises they could be like repetitive um but i just want to throw this out there because i have a one-year-old and he is so vocal in the sense that he just yells all the time like just ah like yelling for no reason sometimes for a reason sometimes a little more angry than others sometimes a little more hungry than others but a lot of times just yell yells just yells in the car and it's, it's hard for me to handle because I definitely have misophonia and it is challenging for me to hear that all day long. Um, so I just wanted to like throw that out there. Like misophonia can be difficult on its own, but when you're a mom and sounds and loud sounds and things like that, like really like hurt your ears and just like trigger you and like give you anxiety or like make you mad, um, you're not alone you're not alone. And it is, I would, I, it's, it is just something that we have to deal with. There are these little headphones though, that I will link you guys to below. My mom sent these to me. They are pretty much, um, another freaking spot. Can you see that? Just right on the shirt. How is this happening? What is that from? Dang it. Fuck. Anyways, they're on my Christmas wish list. They are like little ear pod or like earbuds that you stick in, but it just like kind of mutes the sound around you. It actually would be really good for people suffering, um, from, or, um, suffering from, um, it would actually be really good for, um, other things too. Like I could see it being used for maybe people that are autistic and sound really is, um, hard for them to deal with, like going out in public places and stuff like that. Um, they're kind of on the higher end. I want to say they're like $80 or something like that. So I put them on my Christmas wish list. I will link you guys to them in case that's something that you might want to try. But I just wanted to say, if you're one of those people, like I think Nick, when we first started dating, like my mom called him the other day and was like, I want you to know that Kristen has misophonia. Like when the baby is yelling all day in her ears, like it just, it is irritating to her and it's hard. <laughs> um, so she, I think, I feel like he thought like the beginning of our relationship, like it was a choice to be irritated by this lady's laugh, like across the restaurant. But it's like I, my brain, my ears, just like I pick it up and it just like, ugh, it just like irks me. And I wish it was a choice because then I could choose not to hear it and not to be irritated with it. But I don't have that male gene where I can just like tune things out. I wish I did. Some women have that too. I'm not one of those women. So I um, need to fix the camera. <laughs> I uh, just went through a miscarriage and I am going to talk about this and like my experience currently and like where I'm at and stuff. So I just like want to put it out there that everyone's totally different. Everyone's experience with miscarriage is completely different. And um, I always just think back to myself like, just be honest and truthful about your experience because there's somebody else out there going through the exact same thing that like needs to hear this and like wants to know that they're not alone. So I'm going to do that. Um, but you may feel differently about it and that's totally okay. But this is my experience and I just wanted to like, just tell you like it is. So I, around, um, mid July, I found out that I was pregnant and I was shocked. I like <laughs> sent a picture to my friend Allie and I was like, uh, is this a faint pink line on this thing? Like what is going on? Um, I have been on my like weight loss journey for a year, like, uh, close to a year now. And I was just like, this cannot be happening. Like a small part of me was excited. And then a big part of me was like, fuck, like, are you fucking kidding me? So I took multiple pregnancy tests and I'm like, okay, uh, I'm okay. Uh, so I then couldn't get into the doctor for a while, but we had a giant party at the house coming up for Nick's birthday and a trip to Mexico for Nick's birthday. And I was like, dude, I got to find out if this is viable. So I hadn't told Nick yet. So I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to get a doctor's appointment for a while. Like even like now they're like a month, month and a half out. So 
Um, oh, my laundry, laundry detergent and everything is just, it's magic. Like my recipe for good smelling laundry is like, I even have people like ask me like, what do you use for your laundry? Cause like, oh, my laundry smells so good. Uh, so anyways, found out I was pregnant. I ended up booking an appointment at one of those like ultrasound boutique places because I wanted to see if it was viable. See, I mean, they can't really tell you that at those places, but I didn't know how far along I was. And I was like, maybe they can tell me if there's a heartbeat or like if they see anything in there, like, you know, just something. Um, so I went in and I was like five weeks pregnant and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, this is crazy. Is this mine? I think this is my, is this mine? I can never remember if the firefighter shirts are Nick's or if they're my PJs. <laughs> like this is my PJs. Uh, so, um, I told Nick and, um, and so then we decided to do <coughs> another ultrasound before we went to Mexico just to see, cause at that point I should have been seven weeks and they should have seen a heartbeat most likely. So, uh, so we, I'm like, where is all my stuff? Okay. My stuff's here. So I got to take this off. It's too hot guys. I'm sorry. You're going to have to just see my nipples today. I'm, I know you're used to it. <clears throat> my bad. And like all of this made sense because I was like, oh my gosh, obviously like I've been so tired. I've been so irritable. Like all of this makes sense. I've been snappy. Like it makes sense. And I also started breaking out on my jawline. That is like one of the number one signs which is funny because like that usually happens. All of these things happen when I'm pregnant or I'm sorry, when I'm on my period too. But I was three days late for my period and I was like, I am never late for my period. Like hold the phone, like something's going on. So anyways, I, I wasn't that shocked, but um, well, I was shocked because I really like, I swear I had sex twice in two, <laughs> twice in two months. And one of the times I definitely wasn't ovulating. That was the last time. So apparently I was, I guess, but I wasn't, I don't know. Anyways. That's a lot of information, but, um, uh, so we went in for a second ultrasound just to see. And I was like, I just want to see if they can see a heartbeat or if there's any, like if they tell me how far along I am, because the last place said five weeks. So if this place, even if there isn't a heartbeat says you're seven weeks, there's, there's growth. You know what I'm saying? And I've had two miscarriages before, so this isn't my first rodeo. And I also have two children. So anyways, um, we go in there and this lady's like, you had a positive pregnancy test and I've seen this lady before and she's just very blunt, which I can appreciate, but I did not love like her choice of words. Like I just thought it was kind of like belittling and I know she didn't mean it that way, but I was just kind of like, who says that? Like my husband's sitting right here. Like it's my, I, I have two kids. Like this is my third like miscarriage. Like obviously I knew I was pregnant lady. Yes. I had like 20 positive pregnancy tests obviously. So anyways, I, I know that she doesn't mean anything by this, but like after the fact, I was kind of thinking back on it. I was like, it's kind of a shitty response. You know what I mean? But maybe she didn't know what to say because obviously I had met, had a miscarriage. So she basically says, yeah, like maybe this is kind of the sack, but it seems to be kind of disappearing. So I'm really sorry, but I, you know, and I told her, I was like, I am not surprised. Like this would be my third one. You know, like I was hoping to see something different, obviously, but also a little part of me is like excited because I'm like, I can get back to all of my, like my testosterone and my hormone, um, all my hormone panels and all my crap that I've been, you know, kind of keeping an eye on. And so, um, obviously I was bummed too, but I just feel like everything happens the way that it's supposed to. And God makes sure things go the way that they are supposed to. And so I was just kind of like, all right, well, it wasn't meant to be right now. So whatever. So before we go to Mexico, I just want to get like one more opinion just because I don't know if you guys remember what happened with Harlow, but that was, um, eye opening to say the least. And if you don't know, I'll link you to one of the videos down below so you can check it out because I highly recommend getting second opinions. So I wanted to get a second opinion before we went to Mexico and I went back to the original place that I went to and I was like, yeah, so I just went to another place and they basically like a, two weeks ago or whatever it was. And they basically told me that there was nothing in there anymore. And they believe that like I had a miscarriage. And so she looks again and she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't see anything here now. Maybe like this is a little something. And if, if, if it is, I'm going to measure it. You're five, it was five weeks and there's been no growth in there. So yeah, I'm sorry, but it seems like you've had a miscarriage. So, um, I'm like, okay, uh, 
whatever. So, you know, it is what it is. We go to Mexico and I just like basically started bleeding the entire time that we were there. And that was not fun going into the pool and all of that because yeah, it's just, you know how it is. Um, well, actually you don't, maybe you don't know how it is. Ho hopefully you have, you don't know how it is, but, um, it was a lot of bleeding. And so that was kind of unfortunate timing and stuff. So that's what happened. And, you know, I feel like, like my first two miscarriages, I reacted very differently, especially my very first one. I was so excited to be pregnant and I, that hit me really hard. I was pretty much a ball of emotions and tears and just very upset. Um, and I am so grateful for the fact that I have two healthy children that I feel like this third miscarriage has just hit me at a totally different time in life and in a totally different way because obviously it just wasn't meant to be right now. And um, I just am like so grateful for the fact that I already have two amazing children and the fact that I can just get pregnant to begin with, I'm very grateful for. So I have had a completely different reaction to this pregnancy and part of me feels like wrong, like I should be more upset. But at the end of the day, that's just not what I'm experiencing. And I guess I should be grateful for that too. But like part of me feels like I should be like, like more upset or something. And I'm just not, um, like there is a small bit of me that's like, that's really sad. Like hopefully like, the, like the next time I get pregnant, that baby's soul will be with me again, you know, but, um, oh, I'm having like cramping right now. I took a pregnancy test yesterday and it is still like 100% positive. So I'm a little confused because my bleeding kind of concluded around August 15th or so. And generally speaking in early pregnancy, if you have a miscarriage, um, and early I'm guessing would be three, four, five week, three, two, three weeks, something like that weeks. Maybe, um, your hormones are supposed to go back to normal, like within a week or two. So I don't know if they mean like after your bleeding has concluded or the beginning of the miscarriage when it like first happens, which for me would have been a couple weeks or a week before we went to Mexico. We went to Mexico on July 31st. So I'm kind of sitting here scratching my head. Like, why am I still having a pre positive pregnancy test? Like, do I need to go have a DNC? Cause supposedly that can trigger it, but my hormones are still like out of whack basically. And my HCG levels are still high enough to trigger a positive pregnancy test. So I have another doctor's appointment, but they can't see me for over a month. So what I'm going to do, I think is take another pregnancy test in about two weeks, see what it says. Cause you can supposedly have a, pre a positive pregnancy test a month after a miscarriage. But again, is that when you first start bleeding or that you, when you're done bleeding, cause you can bleed for a month with a miscarriage. So anyways, that's kind of where I'm at, but I'm still exhausted. I'm still feeling symptoms of being pregnant. Like I am having like some cramping right now, which I hadn't had for like a week. And, um, yeah, so I am just like in this like little funk right now. And, um, I'd like to get out of it. It's nothing like where I'm not going to get out of it. And I'm like super depressed or something, but I definitely am in just a little, little funk right now. And I just think it's, it's just kind of everything that I talked about in this video, you know, just kind of like together. And, um, I am very excited for more consistent childcare and I think it'll be great for everybody. I, my personality, I do very well with like consistency in that respect because I, I just like never even know what day it is. Um, thanks for listening guys. I again, encourage you to go get, go to counseling. It's there. It's not that scary. It can be at first, but I highly recommend it. You only live once. You might as well be at, at the risk of sounding cheesy as fuck. You might as well be the best partner, best mom, best coworker, best employee, best everything you can possibly be in this lifetime because it is so fucking short. I hope you guys are doing well. And how are you guys feeling about this year in general? I would love to hear your guys' opinions about like how 2024 is treating you because I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it so far, but um, yeah, I have nothing else to say. So I am just chatting your ears off at this point. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and being there for me and just like being a part of this community. I appreciate you guys. Bye.